Hey folks, how's it going? I'm Josh. I'm checking out the Ricky Gervais Show, uh, Season 1, Episode 9, The Jockey. Um, we're, man, really cranking through these, man. I've enjoyed all of them so far, but still the, the diary bit is still my favorite um, out of all of it. And the China episode is still my favorite of Idiot Abroad. So, with that being said, guys, please continue to leave comments below. All our videos are based on your comments, and if you are subscribed, we check out those recommendations and comments first. So, let's hop into this puppy. For the past few years, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, and Carl Pilkington have been meeting regularly for a series of pointless conversations. This is one of them. Testing. Is that all right? Hello, and welcome to The Ricky Gervais Show, with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant... Hello. ...and the little round-headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. All right. I wonder if we should have a jingle for questions for Carl, because there's a lot of questions coming in for Carl. OK. Oh, chimpanzee, that questions for Carl. <laughs> yeah, OK, no, <laughs> fair enough, that works. Um, this is from Jim and Bobby Manchester. Barely. Carl, if you could talk to any animal, which one would it be and what would you say to it? Uh, insect, animal, anything, fish, anything. Well, they said animal, but that's, yeah, that's broad well, to anything. Animal, well, no, animal, any creature. Uh, insect is an animal. Yeah, no, but I'm just, you know, I don't want to get it wrong. I'm just thinking about one. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff out there, isn't there? Um, I'd, I'd probably go for the tortoise. OK. Because it would take a long time to walk away from you while you were talking. <laughs> no, yeah. just because... Most animals would be off straight away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just because they live for ages, so they'll have loads of stories. They've lived through a lot. You know what I mean? Through walls and stuff. Well, you get an old one. If you get, like, an old one, that's about... Yeah. Most of them something. have lived in a box in a garden for 52 years. No, you, but, you, but you get some that have been about... And even if it's in a box, oh, yeah. you can over it. They've really travelled, have they? <laughs> yeah. I mean... Some what... of them have... Well, some of them have experienced more than you. <laughs> yeah. But um, they've broadened their horizons a bit more than you. They could probably teach you a thing or two, yeah. And I'll what just... would you hope to learn from them? Just... Just history. <laughs> <laughs> Right. From their very specific tortoise perspective. Other emails. We've had... I can't, but still, I get what he's saying. I get what he's going for. Yeah. A lot of questions about time travel. People are fascinated about your approach to time travel. And I know we've talked about this in the past, but um, this is a very specific time travel question. If you had a time machine, Carl, to what event in your childhood would you travel back to and why? What's the point in going back to oh, things that you thought? Yeah. No, it's just that it's never as good, is it? It's like a place you go on holiday, and you go back thinking it'll be as good as the first time. It never is. So I don't, I don't believe in going back to places. What, and all do, that. what, what do you understand the question as? Uh, do, do, you, do you think they're asking, would you go back like a ghost and spy? Would you go back and you've got um, your childhood back? You are that child again. You're in the body. You are the child, or you've got your adult. Um, head and experiences well, on, you know, you, you Rick, could... I really don't think Carl was thinking there was any of those variations. <laughs> no, let's be did. honest. But now that you've flagged them I up... I think he was thinking of him as he is now in school with a cap on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> Too big for foot. the chairs. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, no. come on. No, I, I don't think I'd, I would go back. It's all happened now, isn't it? Yeah, but it's a, an email for our own amusement. Well, OK, well... Choose then... an event. OK, forget the time travel thing. Well, no, hang on, I think, let's clarify one of Ricky's points. What if you could go back and you could live that moment again, how would you do it differently? There's, there's been times where I've gone, oh, that was a bit out of order or whatever, but then you learn from your mistakes, don't you? So I don't want to go back and change stuff, cos it's, it's like that thing that they go on about, innit, where they blame the butterfly on an earthquake. You know, it's going to happen. If it wasn't that butterfly, it's another one. So why, why pass the book? Is what yeah. I'm saying. So you've got no regrets. There's so nothing in your past you'd want about, to change or what, do differently. What What about if you went back and you spied like a ghost on something? You couldn't change anything, but you could you could have a look at someone and just sort of look like uh, you like know, what? like Ebenezer Scrooge does, the ghost of Christmas past. He goes back and he's sort of like looking at himself dancing and stuff. What would you do? What would you go back and have a look at? Yeah, but uh, you're oh. asking me to change. I don't want to change. Yes, you're not, not changing. You're just observing. <laughs> it's impossible. All right, I'll this tell you question. What. It, this is it. It's not going to happen. You're not going to have to. Do this. It's impossible. Right. Yeah, I nearly died once on a on a uh, on an ice pop. Right. Right. Now, maybe if I would have died, I'd say, well, let's go back to that, and I won't have an ice pop. You wouldn't be doing the podcast if you'd have died. You wouldn't be uh, having this email put to you. What are you? That's absurd. About? You're now saying. 
<laughs> you're rewriting history and then going back to change it. Yeah. There's no really need. You didn't die. die. Oh, and we've changed it. You can't change anything. You're just going to go back and watch something. Would you like to go back and watch yourself choking on a Mr. Freeze? No, that's what I'm saying. That's why I wouldn't go back now, because I'm all right. I haven't had one since. I've learned a lesson. I'm not missing them ice pops. So... <laughs> I know that you're making the most of this opportunity to fantasise. I don't see the point in going back in anything. I mean, do you mean go back in time to the oh. point where you can see, like, Rome in its working day? What, in your childhood? Was Rome about when in your childhood were there gladiators well, in your childhood? Well, that's what I'm saying. Everything I've, I've been through, I've been through, so why see it again? Forget it. It was just a nice little question. <laughs> I mean, that shows the, the lack of imagination <laughs> in Carl right. Pilkington. Yeah. Your mind can't fathom right, well, something unless it's, like, you know, got two heads. But I don't see the point in doing something twice. Cos the thing is, save this one good moment when I was about six that I loved. Mm. I'd then have to go through all the other 20 years. Again. Well, why? Why have you imposed that? It's a <laughs> fantasy. Make up. You could go back and come back again. Yeah, whiz back and fast forward 35 years. Nah. Brilliant. No. <laughs> like it was on offer. Like this was really on offer. Move on. Migrant <laughs> workers oh, in God. South China. Are... It's like when they chat about the superpower thing. He's like, it's just, nah, it's too much responsibility. I don't want it. Oh, God. Wearing adult diapers on packed trains heading home for the New Year holiday because they've got no access to the toilet. Many supermarkets in this particular part of China have reported a 50% increase in sales of adult nappies for the train trips. Now, what do you make of that, Carl? You're on a long, long train journey, three hours, four hours. You know there's no toilet. You know you're going to need to go pop on a... Why isn't there any toilets? Well, they just aren't on the, the trains. And they're a really long journey. Yeah. How long? Hours. Well, very long in China. It's a big country. I, I wouldn't... I, I couldn't do that. <laughs> I couldn't... I couldn't do it. I'd, I'd have to hold it in or something. Just like, uh I mean, when I, when I was a young kid, I don't know how young you are when you wear a nappy and that, but um I remember that I didn't like it, doing it in a pair of pants like that, a pair <laughs> of nappies and that. And I used to have to... Uh, even when I was too small to sort of get up on the toilet and that, because you'd fall in. Um, my mum knew that I didn't like nappies and that. I used to just go in, in the corner, just near the kitchen, in this thing that, like a, like a litter tray. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd go it. there, and uh, I'd do <sighs> my thing. And, uh, you know, my mum used to say, oh, he's, he's going there, don't look at him and that, because it put me off. You know, like, cats don't like being watched when they do it. <laughs> When they go in their little tray in the kitchen. No, they don't. They don't like it. I tested it again. What are you, just like a little feral kid, just running around and going to the litter tray, covering it up and then running up the curtain and eating a, a sweet at the top of the pelmet? No, but no, nobody <laughs> likes being watched, and that's what I'm saying. If you're sat on a train and you're knocking one out and that, and everyone's looking at you, it's, I, don't, I don't think it'll catch on. <laughs> Well, it has caught on. As it they're caught all doing it. They're just, they're just, they're just sitting there. They're doing, you know, they're reading the paper, doing Sudoku, and <laughs> and and they're looking round when they're going. They're thinking, oh, no one knows I'm going. And everyone's thinking that, and everyone's going. I mean, what, what, what are we getting to? You know what I mean? What, what's going on in the world that this is happening? I know. I mean, people have always had to travel for ages. <laughs> I, d I, d I just don't, I don't understand why there isn't a toilet on it. We're going backwards. <laughs> We're going backwards. <laughs> Why isn't there a toilet on it? <laughs> well, maybe there is, but maybe people are thinking the queue is going to take forever. Oh, You've got shit. 125 million people. Yeah, but not back. everybody wants to go out once. I mean, I know Chinese and all that are like at the forefront of everything that goes on in the world, inventing stuff first. But this isn't one of the best <laughs> that they've come up with. What have they yeah. invented then? The Chinese just loads yeah. of stuff, haven't they? They've yeah, well, loads of stuff. Yeah, I was going to ask you. You seem quite educated on the subject, but. Um, they did them cat mop things that I told you about. Brilliant. Um, I mean, this was where you put mops on the feet of cats, was that right? Yeah. And they wander about the house, clean up and that, wash the floor for you whilst you're pottering about. Um, Is that a real they've thing? They've done, like, hats with umbrellas on them. They've done... They've done... I mean, they've, they've been known for, like, coming up with stuff first. Yeah, I mean, my first thought was gunpowder, but, yeah, cats with mops is good as well. <laughs> Well, now to one of our most popular features. Um, I mean, this could even rival monkey news one day. It, I mean, it is monkey news. It's, it's, <laughs> you know, it's news from the point of view of a monkey, a shaved monkey. It's Carl Pilkerton's diary. Oh, he's written it down, yeah! <laughs>
Was that the jingle, or were you just, well, yeah, just sort annoyed of, about sort something? Of. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Oh, Went and did yeah, the podcast. Yes. We had a meeting after. I don't like meetings, as I can't keep focused on what people are talking about. I think Ricky has the same problem as after 25 minutes he was trying to wrestle me. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to do what spiders do and stayed still as if I was dead. But Ricky just stayed on top of me, not moving. A bit like when you see one of them big snakes swallowing a sheep. Ricky got bored and oh, released me. I went home thinking, why had I left my old job for this? A homeless man asked me for some money, but I didn't feel like I should treat him as I felt that he probably had a better day than me. Oh, oh, no. oh, God. Suzanne called me to say she'd gone for a haircut and that she'd meet me in the supermarket. I went to the supermarket, but she wasn't there. I called her and she said she was near the fruit aisle. I went to the fruit aisle and she wasn't there. Turns out she was in a different supermarket <laughs> on the other side of town. And that if I'd listened to her properly, I'd have known that. I didn't want to say that I... Well, you just went to the first supermarket you thought of, as opposed to listening to what supermarket... I'm in the supermarket. All right, bye. I didn't want to say that I hadn't heard her properly because my ears were ringing a bit from the wrestling from earlier. <laughs> 25 minutes later, I met up with Suzanne. Her haircut wasn't that bad. Normally, her haircuts are followed by an argument between us as she pays over the odds for some daft haircut that's the latest style. Brilliant. I wish she'd take a picture out of a magazine or ask for a style rather than letting the hairdresser do what she wants. I said I only tell her to do this as she's got a square head and a close-cut <laughs> hairdo makes it look squarer. She said, what do you think of this cut? I said it looked all right as I couldn't be bothered arguing about it. It's weird writing a diary. I don't know who thought of doing one of these first. The last time I did one was at school. They used to get you to do it so they could keep an eye on whatever you were up to. My diary used to say the same thing every night. Got home, went to the shop to get potatoes, bread, milk. Went home, watched telly, went to bed. I think I might have gone to Twiggy's Dance Club just so I had something different to write. You've not told us about Twiggy's Dance Club. It's just, uh, you know, I sort of, when I was a kid, I sort of gave everything a bit of a go. I did boxing and that, didn't I? Gave that a go. Um, for about 45 minutes. And, uh, yeah, a mate, a mate sort of said, oh, you know, you're into your dancing, your robotics and that, you're doing, <laughs> doing your body popping, right, body popping and that. He said, uh, you ought to come to Twiggy's. And um, I went there, um, but I didn't go in, it was shut. It was, <laughs> it was they, they were just having, like, loads of toilet rolls delivered. I think, like, <laughs> they, they were, like, using it as a storage place for toilet rolls and that. So I said, oh, I've come to have a dance. And like, oh, not tonight, come back tomorrow. <laughs> I never went back. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, oh, what, a wa what a waste of an anecdote. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Brilliant. Just to recap, you're convinced then that the teachers are asking you to keep diaries so they can keep tabs on you. Um, and then to continue the diary. As there were more problems happening on the estate, they started to add Saturday and Sundays to the school diary to keep an eye on what we were doing at the weekend. I struggled to fill it on a Sunday as the shop I got potatoes and bread from was shot on a Sunday. <laughs> I had to go over to Shepherd's Bush to meet someone. I got the tube. There was a badly burnt man on the tube. It's amazing how the body can continue through quite a lot of bad stuff. It got me thinking about how much stuff you could remove in your body, one by one, without dying. If it was a competition, the cockroach would win as it can live for a week without a head. I just mean, like, say, say if, you know, they're running out of ideas for TV programmes and that, right? They get someone who isn't well. They go, look, do you mind if we make a programme on you? And what they do... They sit them in the bed and they go, right, what we're going to do now is tech out the heart but replace it with a pacemaker. Right, no, go no, on. No, 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 no. Sorry, people with pacemakers don't have their heart taken out and a pacemaker popped in. All right, then. Um, some sort of machine. What, what I'm getting to is... Have the, you been playing Operation? What I mean is... <laughs> what I mean is the big finale would just be a head so chatting with loads of wires going into it and it's like, look what we can do with science. But, <laughs> That's what the programme's called. It's the same every week. The volunteer is just ahead with loads of wires coming out Look of it. Look what we can do in science. And he's going, oh, goodbye. <laughs> Got some post delivered to me today. It was... <laughs> oh, this is This great. makes it in the diary. Got some post delivered to me today. It was addressed to Mr Dilkington. <laughs> Dying. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I got some post delivered to me today. It was addressed to Mr. Dilkington. 
I opened it and the first sentence read, Dear Mr. K. Dilkington, you're one of our most valuable customers. I put it in the bin. Thought I would learn some new words, as Steve always says I don't use enough different words. I read in the Fortean Times that the word "wew" means an ugly female ghost with drooping breasts. <laughs> what? what do you mean? Is what? that how I'm, am I pronouncing Who's that right? Who's using that word? Who is using that word? It was just W-E-W-E. -E. Let's call it a woo. Mm -hmm. An ugly female ghost with drooping breasts. I think I'm right when I say there are too many words in the world. I don't think I will ever get round to using the word woo. Watched a health programme. Wasn't watching it properly, but heard some doctors say that we only get so many heartbeats in a lifetime, so don't do too much exercise. I told Suzanne, and she said I probably hadn't heard it right. We got talking about death. Suzanne said she didn't like thinking about it. I said she might end up being a woo. <laughs> I was chuffed as I'd managed to use my new word. <laughs> I went to the supermarket to get tonight's tea. Oh, On the no. way, I stopped and looked in the fishmongers at all the different fish they had in the window. It's like a child in, like, in one of those kids' TV shows. I know! Mr. Kil Mr. Pilkington went to the fishmonger. He stopped and looked at all the fish in the window. Hello, Mr. Dilkington, they said. <laughs> there was a newspaper clipping stuck on the glass about a two-headed fish that they've made in Taiwan. I don't see the point in doing this, as a fish having two heads ain't going to solve the world's hunger problems, as the head is the bit you throw away. Invent a fish with two bodies, and I'd say well done. Good point, aren't it? Suzanne watched one of her favourite TV programmes. I've told her the tally only goes on if there's something she wants to watch. If there's nothing on, she has to talk to me about stuff I've learnt. Like Descartes. Watched a programme on him the other day. He is the one who said something like, I know I'm about because I dream. Doesn't work for everything because ants don't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? I don't know if I'd what like that or not. About? You don't know if you would like it if you didn't ever I'm sleep. Not sleeping. It's just one long day. I don't know. Don't know how you put up with that. Do you think it'd be a good idea? No. Why not? What's <laughs> As you said, it would get a bit boring. You know, your sleep is your rest, your time off. It get, it, it it helps you uh, detoxify. It helps you sort of um, think things through on a subconscious level. It, it, you know, but don't it, you ever get it where... I mean, sometimes it's brilliant to have a sleep when you're tired, but don't you sometimes yeah, feel that's like... that's the best time to have a sleep when yeah. you're tired. No, yeah. but sometimes when you go to bed and you're not that tired and you're kind of thinking, oh, I'm going to waste some hours of my life now and I'm not really in the mood for this Well, that's thing. just wishing you had longer on this earth doing creative things. I mean, if you didn't have to sleep, you could spend more time talking to a tortoise and going to the toffee shop. <laughs> I, get, I, I, get a, I don't get a lot of sleep. Um, my shirt is, is really unhealthy. But I get what he's saying because you wish you had more hours in a day to do stuff because you spend so much time doing something that you really don't enjoy just to survive and you wish you could spend more time actually doing stuff you enjoy. I, I definitely get that. Well, it's that time again. If you'd give us the <laughs> jingle, please. Oh. Chim Pantry Dive. <laughs> okay, now that surely cannot be fair on anyone's ears listening. <laughs> Right. Um, ages ago, right about about the nineteen fifties. Oh yeah, oh yeah. There was this gangster knocking about, and do you know like? Was he called Hairy Fingers? Do you know like a lot of gangsters like <laughs> to get into gambling and that? Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know like all these all these peers and that all these all these mates <coughs> who are like gangsters and stuff. Mm. They've all bought horses, right? That like they take. You know, tech racing, and they make money from them, that don't they? Yeah. Mm. So anyway, he and was Chuckles like, Chuckles Seagull was no different. And and he was like, yeah, that's uh, that's a good thing to get into. I might might get into a bit of that, right? So he gets himself this horse, right? And it, there's a big race coming up. That's why he's sort of it's a bit of a last minute. And the and the jockey turns up, and it's fine. He's a human jockey, and it's fine. Excellent. Okay, well that was another so, podcast. So anyway, so um, it's, please it's, listen. Oh, hang on, there's more. There's more. Oh, go on. on. So oh. so anyway, so. Uh, this big race is coming up. He's, yeah. he's like, I've got to be involved in this yeah, because definitely. I can make a lot of money out of me also. Choose the jockey wisely then. So he says to his, like, <coughs> mate, he said, look, uh, I've got myself a horse and that. 
He said, we just need a jockey, get someone, oh, yeah. sort it out, and yeah. what have you, so we can get in this race. So, yeah, the jockey so club. Loads mate, of it's like, yeah, all right, I'll have a, I'll have a word and that, have a look round and that, see if there's anyone decent. And there's, the, the good there. thing about jockeys is there's never been a shortage of jockeys because a lot of them don't make the grade. So there's, there's, there's always too many jockeys to go round. Normally, always too many human jockeys. Yeah, yeah. There's, you, there's never a problem getting jockeys. Fine. Go on. So anyway, right? So his mate says, "Look, I'm having a problem getting a jockey." Seems odd oh, because God, Ricky's just weird. been saying oh, no, no, he's just been saying there's not a problem. What do you mean? So just what? because the main problem was Go on. a lot of jockeys were aware of this gangster and were saying, "I'm not getting involved with this guy. The chances are I won't get paid. You know, he's a gangster. It's not no, worth it." No, you would do it if it was a gangster asking you. You'd be scared of the consequences. So anyway, he's saying, "Look, don't be coming to me with problems and that. Right? I've got the horse. I want it in the race." <laughs> Sort it out, so they're like, oh, but boss, and he's like, don't give me any of that. Don't exactly, they do what he says, so any jockey would do it. Go on. So anyway, <laughs> so the day before... The big race, yeah. <laughs> Left it to the last minute, OK, but yeah. fine. And uh, he says, have you, have you got a jockey then? And they're like, yeah, but... And he's going, don't worry about it, have you got a jockey? Yeah, but... And he's like, look... He wants what, to what? say, sure, he wants... Yeah, so yeah, he uh, he's saying, has he ridden their horses before on that? He said, well, yeah, he has, but mainly... And he's like, oh, brilliant. And he goes, yeah, but mainly in, like, a in the In the jungle... No, like in, in, the, in the circus and that, he'd <gasps> worked, he'd, he'd worked with horses and stuff. In the circus, it's fine. Yeah. So he's yeah. like, that's fine. that's enough. That's that's all I need to know. Well, they'd be too heavy because circus said, people so, are quite built, aren't they? They're, they're he said, be a so, bit heavier than the jockey because the jockeys are about eight and a half stone. He said, brilliant, get him down there and that, right? Yeah. Anyway, the race happens. He didn't want to meet him beforehand. He wasn't worried. No about point. It. Not no. bothered. No. As far as he's concerned, he's, it's put all his, sorted. he's putting his money on it and what have you. Yeah. Sure. Right. What happened is they were trying to make him put on the jo jockey outfit. Yeah. But for some reason it didn't fit that well. Sleeves too short, it's, it's legs too, too long. It's that sort of problem. OK. So they let him, like, you know, wear his stuff that he wore in the circus and that, because it's, it's, it's comfortable with that, yeah, he's yeah, happy yeah. with it, do you know yeah, what I mean? That's what he's happy him. with. Yeah. Anyway, race starts and what have you. Uh, this horse straight out of the trap and that. High speed, right? This, this jockey's got a really big grin on his face, he's loving it, right? Everyone's cheering, going, who is this? Who's this jockey? Yeah. yeah. It's amazing, never seen him before, and yet, look at him. But they can see his face, clearly. Anyway, Gangster's happy in that, cos he's, he's won. Well, I just want to say, the crowd, the crowd can see the jockey, can they? What? The crowd can... I mean, it's Yeah, face but he's not... so fast and what have you. <laughs> the blur, it's a blur, it's all the blur. <laughs> he's, really, he's good at it. I mean, apparently right. he was close to falling off, and people were like, he's, he's gone, he's a goner. Right. He's got such a good reach that he managed to grab hold of oh, the... Good reach. Oh. At the end of it, you know, like, the winner sort of rides around the crowd a bit, yeah. like, sort of, you know, show off and what have you. Yeah. And all the women are there, and, you know, like, women are all dolled up at these events. Sure. Yeah. They've all got big, big hats on. Uh, Sometimes they got through all those hats. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> right, yeah. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> Ricky, um, yeah. Oh, one, one of the women, one of the women, <laughs> oh, particularly God. Carmen Miranda, was very popular. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, one of the so women had, like like you say, fruit and what have you on it, yeah. a little, little banana. Right, oh, right. some kind of Cuban they're, they're not real, though, the hats. They're, they're, uh, no, they're, they're, they're not real fruit, is it? No, yeah. not, never. So but I don't really know who, well, I thought they wore those sort of kind of Cuban yeah, entertainment but even, shows. I didn't realise they wore them at events. Yeah, even if it's like a big event, you know, you might have a hat with fruit and it's sort of joke, but it's it's fake fruit because it would it would, it would yeah. perish. It well, would, this but... this jockey didn't understand that. He'd never seen false fruit. I don't understand. <laughs> but why did, why did the jockey... So <laughs> why did you say desperate for fruit? I don't, I don't understand. understand. So anyway, so meanwhile, the gangster's collecting his 500 quid winnings. Yeah. Right? He's over the moon. Yeah. He kicks off because of this woman with the fruit. Yeah, I don't understand. I still don't understand no, why the jockey would go... Everyone from... noticed. Jockey, little monkey fella. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> if he was a monkey, that would make sense. Yeah. What year was this? Because I want to. It was it was 1950s, and that's where the saying comes from about you know, like in Cockney slang, 500 quid is a monkey. He he sort of put you know he put a monkey on it, and it all goes back to the time. So when... So this happened in this in in England. In this country, yeah, yeah in, in England. So someone could well still be alive so, that we could easily yeah. contact. That well, would that's it. We always you know, there's no time length on this monkey news. If you've got any, if it's history, you know, if yeah. it goes back. Or know, if it's made up, bullshit. Just, just send it in. <laughs> <laughs> if you've got send any bollocks, if it's actually bollocks, send please send it in. That's this week's monkey news. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> 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 oh. I love monkey news. I love how he just keeps talking through it no matter what. Like, he just finishes. He finishes what his thoughts is. This... This was good. I enjoyed this one. Um, Carl had a kind of a... He had a really boring, weird childhood. The dude pooped in a bin, like a cat bin or whatever. 
His whole day comprised him going to school, going to the store, and then going home. Like, man. Maybe there's just nothing around his house to do. When I was a kid, like, I always explored and everything. All the time. I was always in the woods and all that stuff. I figured he would have more like a kind of like a Huck Finn kind of like, you know, childhood where he kind of got out, did stuff, you know, took chances. Because I'm not like a chance taker. And he, he, um, and I even, I got out there because he just seems like a, I mean, he, I don't mean it that way. I know Carl doesn't like to come out of his comfort zone, but he still seems like he'll like take a chance for friends. Like he's doing that sh- the crazy show, Idiot Abroad. So if he's hanging out with some friends, he seems like the friend who'll be just down for anything. You know what I mean? He won't do it himself, but he seems like he'll he'll go if he has some buddies or something with him. I don't picture him being like a kid who just you know goes to school, store, home, and then that that's it. I'm surprised. I'm actually a little surprised by that. And I'm super surprised by him pooping in the bin. Yeah. This is still this, this is really funny. I still... The original diary bit, that's still the top one. Um, I still like I th- Monkey News. So Monkey News and Diary are my two favorite parts of the, the show now. Especially not, not they're doing the diary part. I agree with the meetings. I, I hate meetings. Jesus, man, do I hate freaking meetings. They just, always feel like a waste of time. Um, it's almost just like a... Most in retail, I just feel like it's like a, just a setup for accountability. So you'd be like, I, well, I said it. I know I didn't give you the resources or anything to get the job done or the P or whatever it was to do it. But since I said it in that meeting, now I can step away from it. A lot of, I feel like a lot of leaders just use meetings as a way to say like, okay, I said, I said it. So that's my only part as opposed to actually being a leader and giving you the resources and all that kind of jazz to actually get the job done. All right, guys, that is all for this one. Hopefully you guys are happy, safe and healthy. Um, Hopefully you guys are enjoying your time with family and friends and all that good jazz. And shoot, that's all, guys. Uh, I'll see you next one later.